Hi, and welcome to my podcast on ancient Greek jewelry. My goal for this podcast is to teach you a little bit about how ancient Greek jewelry has developed into our modern day jewelry and to give you a little bit more information about it. Ancient Greeks had a very special and unique way of producing their precious jewelry. They used cuttlefish bones, which are bones from a fish that only has one big chunk of bone instead of an actual fish tail. Jewelers would carve out the shape of the jewelry piece in the bone. Next, they would melt the metal that they were going to use in a large pot over open fire. When the metal was molten, they would pour it into the cuttle bone carving and wait for it to harden. Now, you may wonder why they used bones to make their jewelry. Well, they used it because in ancient Greece, it was cheap and easy to get. Plus, it does not melt or fall apart when it comes in contact with the hot metal. The first pieces produced this way were finished in 1600 BCE. Imagine that you go to Greece and open a jewelry box and inside you find gold and silver pieces. This is a sign that you have found the jewelry box of a rich woman. In ancient Greece, jewelry was only common among the wealthy. They would wear lots of jewelry, mostly to show their wealth. You would often see them wearing dazzling earrings, bracelets, necklaces, and the most common type, the headgear. Both men and women would wear them. They would be decorated with gold and beautiful gemstones. Ancient Greece is well known for its headgears, and wealthy Greeks made their headgears from gold and silver. Would you spend $20 million on a piece of jewelry? That is actually what the world's most expensive necklace costs. So as you can tell, not that much has changed regarding jewelry. For example, only the wealthiest of the wealthy can afford the most expensive pieces. This is kind of the same concept as in ancient Greece, though some things have changed. Now everyone who desires to, both men and women, can wear jewelry, and it's not reserved only for women. Gifts and curses. I think that jewelry has both gifts and curses. For example, jewelry has a large impact in our cultures and communities. This is important because culture and community plays a big role in our lives and who we are. Though I also think that there are some curses. For instance, people may start spending unhealthy amounts of money on jewelry, and this can cause them to lack money for when they need it for something important, such as a bank loan for a house. I learned that ancient Greek jewelry had a large impact on our lives today. For example, our jewelry would probably look different or maybe we would not have jewelry at all. Without jewelry, our cultures would probably not be as developed as they are today. Perhaps it also had an impact on what metals we consider the most valuable today. Thank you for listening to this podcast on ancient Greek jewelry. I hope you learned something new and you enjoyed it. And here are my sources that I used to complete this project.